I am not so well conversant in your language, but I will try. I have tried to make an attempt to talk to you a few words in Nepali. Am I audible to everybody in the room? Even to the last row? And uh, if there are any empty seats in the front, I would like to ask you to come forward. So this afternoon, we are going to have some fun. Okay? Writing will be later. First is what we call as be your own master. Now, could I request dimming of all the lights or switching of all the lights so that there's more clarity of the slides? All right. Now, Acharya, I need uh, one small packet that I'd ask you for. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, that's come, that's come. Fine, fine, fine. So, let's make it more interactive. In the afternoon, people feel sleepy, right? Yes, very good. Why do you feel sleepy in the afternoon? Because we eat lunch. You eat lunch, there is more blood flowing into your stomach than your brain. And in the afternoon, if there is a very boring lecture, it's like a lullaby and you'll go to sleep. Right? What's your name? Asutosh. Asutosh? But try. Very good, Asutosh Batrai. You say, yes, we go to sleep, so I will give you a chocolate not to go to sleep. <laughs> All right? So what is this? What do you understand? Now, we'll make it more interactive. See, unless you interact with me and talk to me, I like to have a dialogue. No monologues. And I am happy to see all of you here. And I understand there are some parents and teachers. I requested more parents and teachers to come. Any parents here, please put your hand up. Parents. Parents of children over here or parents whose children are not here. Please put your hand up. Are you a parent? Teacher. But you have children. Yes. You have a lot of children in class. One of yours is own and others are also your children, your students, right. Nobody else is a parent? So oh, you're a parent, very good. Any more parents? Okay, how many teachers? Please put your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Now, in these sessions, I want to first make a request. I have nothing against anybody or I have no axe to grind with anybody. We will deal with real situations where sometimes we may also talk about teachers, but then don't read me in the wrong. It's just to see that everybody falls in line with various things, okay? And we are talking about certain systems. Morning, there was a lot of discussion about entrepreneurship not being encouraged in this country, okay? We will go into certain details of that and I'll make it more simpler for you, okay? Be your own master means what? What do you understand? Whoever knows, just put your hand up. You may be right or wrong. You have the freedom of speech. Yes. Huh? Follow your own thing, dreams. Very good. Follow your own dreams is quite close to be your own master. Now for you. Oh, sorry. That fell short. Now, if you give the right answers, you will get chocolates. Okay? All right. All right, my name is K.C. Janardhan. How are you going to call me? You can call me J. How do you call me? J. J. That's better, isn't it? Good. Call me J. So there I've tried. Swagatam to you. Sanchai Hunahuncha. Am I close to your Nepali? Malai Nepali Bolna Aundina Thoroma Koshish Garuchu. Thoroma Koshish Garuchu. But if I stay in your Nepal for a month or two, I will learn your Nepalese language and speak to you in Nepalese. Languages are very interesting to learn the sounds that you produce with your mouth. 
and your tongue articulating it. As simple as that. If you can mimic sounds, you can speak any language. All right? Okay. My dear fellow travelers, you're all in a nation which is earning its income from tourism, and you have a lot of travelers coming here. We are also travelers in life. From birth to death is a long journey. So I consider you all as my fellow travelers in pursuit of knowledge and excellence. I am as much a student as you are of life. I am not a teacher or a ma master. Though I say, okay, maestro, I have mastered myself, but I am as much a student also. So you can all feel comfortable and free with me. And what will you call me? Yeah. You had your breakfast, yeah. lunch? Yeah. Come on, let me hear it. Yeah. Good. More energies, right? Good. So, this is a wonderful statement that I have come across. Maybe if you want, you can make a note of it. Learning begins in the womb and ends in the tomb. In case you don't understand, if you can ask me, I can try in Hindi or I'll ask somebody to translate it for you. I hope all of you understand the language of English. Anybody has any issues, put your hand up. Please, please feel free. Okay? Learning begins in the womb and ends in the tomb. That means from the time we are born until death, we are learning, learning, learning. We got to learn. Don't stop at school, college, and university. Actually, school, college, and university puts you on track to learn. And after that, you continue to learn for the rest of your life. You agree? Yes, sir. Now, whoever says, yes, sir, I will give you an assignment. You have to write a letter to Her Majesty, the Queen of England, recommending my name for knighthood during the next garter ceremony at the Windsor Castle. Her Majesty, the Queen, has to put the sword on my shoulder and say, Arise, Sir Janardhan. Then you will call me sir. Got it? Sir is a title which is given by the British and the monarchy for people who have done outstanding work and who have excelled. All right? So I have still not been recognized by any monarchy or the Queen of England. So call me? Yes. Right. So let's get to learning because you're all in school and all of us have to learn until death. So, what are the stages of learning? How do we learn? I need answers from you. What are the stages of learning? And how do we learn? Unfortunately, this program is actually meant for three days. I'm trying to crush it into one and a half hours. My next program on handwriting is again for three days. I'm crushing it into one and a half hours. Time constraint. I can only show you a trailer today afternoon. Ek jalak. Picture ka trailer dekha hai na? Idhar thoda scene, udhar thoda scene. Aha, interesting hai toh pura picture baad mein dekho. Right? Okay. So, what are the stages of learning? How do we learn? By imagining. By imagining things you learn, okay? You imagine and learn, okay? By copying from others, okay? That is more of an American accent. Are you in an American school? No, no, no. But then you like to do something American, right? Okay. By copying from others, okay? Yes, he said it. You know where we come from? We all come from where? Where is my friend Acharya? Last evening as we were walking into this room, he showed me something on this building. Do you remember Acharya? No, you showed me something walking on this building. Yeah, where do we come from? Where are we from? Huh? Where are we from? 
You came from the womb, fine. But mankind, where did human beings come from? Civilization. Who said that? Very good. I am going to give you a bigger chocolate. We all came from the monkey. Right? What is monkey good at? <laughs> yes? Copying what he said. Right? We copy from others, he said. He didn't say monkey. Because you said monkey, you got it. <laughs> we copy from others. Monkey is good in copying. That's why you have a very, very interesting saying, aping the West. Ape, super ape. So any language, anything you want to do, you try to mimic, you try to copy. It's a learned behavior. Of course, there is your own behavior, but then most of it is learned. Isn't it? You watch a film and you like the dance. Then what do you do? You also try to find the steps. You copy, isn't it? Very good. So now I will give a small chocolate because he didn't say monkey. <laughs> oh, very good. Then you can share it with somebody else if you get exhausted. I want to exhaust the chocolates here. I want you to keep giving me right answers. Okay? So how do we learn? There are stages, which I'm going to tell you. There are four stages of learning. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever imagined about this? What are the four stages? Now, parents, teachers, please feel free to interact with me. Please. Four stages of learning, what is that? I have got that there. Unconsciously incompetent, consciously incompetent, consciously competent, and unconsciously competent. What is this? Come on, try. Tell me, what are these four stages? Every one of us go through this. And in today's world of digitization, all of us will keep going through this again and 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 again. What is this unconsciously incompetent? Think of the day you were born, day one. You are a baby who has come into this world. What do you know in this world? You're looking around. <laughs> What's this new place, man? I just come out of the womb. <laughs> I don't understand what people are talking. I don't see, I see so many things, I don't understand what is around. Huh? That is unconsciously incompetent. You do not know how to speak, you do not know what you want also. Right or wrong? Yes. And you are like that new computer which has been brought home. Hardware has come. Will the computer work with just the hardware? So, for one year, software is being loaded, data entry is loaded into this human computer. I will take her as a human computer because she said imagination, right? So, how do we get information for one year after you were born? Okay, our surroundings. How do you get it? How is software loaded into you? Your hard disk is here. Unconsciously. Okay. Anybody else also? Come on. Tell me, how do we really get this information into this system? Into this hard disk? Ah! Oh, quite close. You'll get a chocolate. Unmeaningful sounds are going on, you listen to. One year data entry, sounds. Visual entry is happening right through your eyes. You are looking at so many things. So, you spend one year for the data entry for visual input, auditory input. Then they give you something to eat. You smell it, so you get olfactory input. You get the taste, right? Gustatory input. Then you feel, oh, it's warm, oh, it's cold, that is sharp, this is hard, this is soft, right? All the sensory organs are the ones which are absorbing your information. After one year, now with the data that has been entered, you try to crawl, 
roll, crawl, because you want something which is looking nice, you can't reach it. I'm going to relate to a few things that happened this morning. If some of you were here, you would relate to it. There was a need, hunger. So you had to make some noise. Only then somebody came and said, oh, baby is crying. Let the baby be given milk, right? If you don't ask for it, you don't get it, isn't it? You don't ask for it. So you have to make some noise. So you wanted to make some noise and get the attention. That's how you started learning language. Then your parents and people around started teaching you how to pronounce that. Hmm? Isn't it? And you learned your language. So it was sounds that were recorded in your brain. It is that sound bite which you try to reproduce. That's why the monkey, that's why you learned from others. And you learned your language. And you learned many things. And every sound produced in a particular frequency has a meaning attached. So different languages have different sounds. Sometimes they have same sounds. In one language it is good. In another language it is dangerous. Right? You can have a lot of fun with language. If you go to a state in India called Gujarat, at this time, around 2, 3 o'clock, somebody will ask you, Aap snake kaenge? You know what a snake is, right? What's a snake? Huh? Swamp. Aap snake kaenge? Are you a vegetarian? Kya snake kaenge aap? Nahi bhai, hum to snake kaate hain. 3 o'clock we have snake. Snakes. Snack, he calls it as snake. So there are so many such interesting things where people don't pronounce it properly and then it becomes very hilarious, sometimes quite dangerous. All right. So you are spending one year to become consciously incompetent. Oh, I'm conscious. I need to speak to get the attention. I need to crawl to go pick up things I want. Right. I have to do a lot of things. And then you start learning a lot of things until the age of four or five. Rapid learning happens. That's why they tell you, if there's a child in the house, hey, don't speak bad words, man. Don't use this kind of expressions. The child will pick up. If there's a young child of two, two and a half who's speaking, if you say, you idiot, what will the child say? You idiot. But he doesn't know the meaning. Right? Copying immediately. After spending that time, the child goes to a level at the age of five or six, you too would have gone through it. Consciously competent. That's the time parents and teachers must have observed. The child of five or six in the house is running around and one of the older people says, I want to tune this channel. Grandpa, grandma does not know how to use the remote. Then you immediately say, I'll do it for you. I'll show you how to do it. The child does it, na? Oh, I'm feeling so hot. I'll turn on the fan. The child will go there, switch it on. And then it'll turn around and see. Ah, oh, you didn't appreciate. Then I'll switch it off. If you say, very, very well done, very good. And if you clap, I'm happy. Right? All of you start looking for appreciation. If you're not appreciative, do you like it? No. So then you get your approval. I am consciously competent. I know how to turn on the fan. I know how to, you know, uh, switch channels. I know how to tune things. So you have learned that you're demonstrating, I can do this. I'm competent at this. I know how to do this, right? So when I know how I'm doing it and I get confirmation after seven, eight, nine years time, I'm doing a lot of things myself. Now you keep doing all those things yourself. You don't look for approvals, right? You are unconsciously competent. You know which switch operates, which light in your house, right? You know which channel to tune on. Then if somebody says, Are yaar, I don't know how to tune it. Grandpa, I'm busy. Grandma, I'm busy. You turn it on yourself. I've taught you, isn't it? Right? So you go to these four stages. Unconsciously, you're competent. In the middle of the night, if you wake up, you want to go to the loo. What do you do? You get up, you go around that wall, and you feel the switch. Tadak. You know which switch actually comes on. You're 
kind of unconscious, right? But you could switch it on, isn't it? That is where you become unconsciously competent. So these four stages, all of us go through it. And in a subject, if you want to become an expert, you have to go through all these, uh, all these stages. In today's world, so much of new things are coming up. You got to keep learning, unlearning, relearning. Learning, unlearning, relearning. It's like snakes and ladders. Have you, do you know that game? Snakes and ladders? You climb up the ladder, there's one snake there. Aha, I'm going to swallow you. You'll go back. Again, you have to climb up. So you have to learn a lot of new things. The future of you people are, you're going to learn, unlearn, and relearn more than what we did in our lives. Because the changes are so fast. 9 a.m. today morning in Japan, what was existing as watches and your, what you call your uh, cell phones and whatnot, by 5 p.m. today evening, some changes have happened. So 9 a.m., whatever technology was there, is obsolete by 5 p.m., isn't it? You people want a cell phone, every six months you want a new phone. Why? Yeah, latest developments, changes, right? All that. Yes, I said I will give a chocolate to somebody. She said imagination, and she also said something else, so she also deserves a chocolate. Give her a hand here, come on, encourage people. When somebody says something, you must clap. The more you clap, the more nerve endings get stimulated, and you feel more energetic, isn't it? Come on. When anybody else is being appreciated, give a good hand. Who else needed a chocolate? I had to give a chocolate to somebody else. Who? Ah, oh, yes, but I don't know how far it will reach. Let me see whether it can reach. Let me try. Oh, good. Fairly good target, right. What is the best form of learning? The best form of learning is experiential learning. Whatever you learn from the books, mug up and vomit does not work. What was the best experiential learning you have had in your life until now? I will give you a very simple example later. Tell me, right from the childhood when you started growing up, what is that experiential learning you had? Real experiential learning. When you were a kid, somebody said, hey, don't play around with those switches. That electricity will give you a shock. How many of you played with the switch and then got a shock? Put your hand up. That was experiential learning. Once you know what a shock is. Ah! <laughs> Once again, will you put your finger there? No. Because you have experienced what a shock is. Similarly, everything in life, good or bad, whatever it may be, once you experience it, you will never ever forget it in your life. So learn anything you want to in an experiential manner. A request to teachers and parents is try to make the subjects more experiential for the students so that they will never ever forget it for the rest of their lives. If you've never tasted a particular dish, if you've never tasted sweet, and if I tell you this chocolate is sweet, how would you know what is sweet? You've never experienced it. It's like that. All right? So experiential learning. I will skip a few slides when it comes to certain older people that I address, okay? It may not be uh, pertinent to you, so I will skip them. Maybe I will address the older people quickly there, right? I'm going to ask you these questions. I've asked this all over the world. Various students, various parents, teachers, and various universities. Who are you? Now, reverse it and ask yourself, who am I? Huh? You and me. Human being. Hey, does he have a tail? Does he have two horns? No? He is a human being. That's known, my dear. Sorry, okay, don't take it uh, seriously. You're a human being. Correct? 
good. What is known? So who are you? Who am I? Now, best is to ask in your own language. Tapai ko hu? Tapai ko hu? Ma ko hu? Am I right? Is it okay? Is my Nepali all right or kacha? Ha, kacha hai. Little, little. Correct me then. How do I say that? Tapai ko ho. Is it right? Now next. Ma ko hu. Hu. Is it right? See? Copying from the person who said you copy from others. <laughs> right or wrong? Good. Thank you. So ask the question. Have you asked? Have you ever asked these questions to yourself? No. Write it down. It's time you ask now. Come on, write it down. Write it down in your own language. In your own script. In English. Ask yourself now. What are you going to ask yourself first? I asked you a question. Tapai ko ho. Then you ask yourself. Ma ko hu. Have you asked ma ko hu? What's the answer you get? Ma ko hu. Any answers? Ah, that was very smart. I am who I am. I am the best person of myself. This is abstract. I want specific. I am human being is known, but I appreciate you. Don't feel bad. This is how we'll have a little bit of fun. If you have not given that answer, we wouldn't have had fun, right? I am a human being, he said. That's known. I am who I am. Ha! I am? <laughs> Laugh, man, it's all right. Afternoon is meant for laughter. Come on. Laugh out. I am? You said something. I am the best person of myself. But what is that best of yourself? You ask yourself. Ask yourself in your local language. Now start thinking. Have you ever asked this question? Have the elders asked this question to yourself? At some point in life, yes? I am? I couldn't hear. I am energy. Every human being has energy. Without energy, your voice also wouldn't have come. Good. Hmm, some more. I am energy. What else? What else? Come on. We are what? We learn from our experiences. Or? Or our mistakes. That's what we are. Okay. Not very close. If it was close, I would have given you another chocolate. Keep thinking. I'm going to shoot another question. There will be three questions which I'm going to shoot, which you will go home and also think, start thinking. I must answer this. I must answer this question. Yes. I am? Unique for the other. Why not for yourself? Why only to the other? Thanks. I appreciate. See, when somebody answers, please give them a clap. They have at least tried to answer. They have at least got, up, got the courage to stand up and say something. Right? Hello. Ah. I am a son for my parents. I am the son of my parents. Brothers for my... Brothers for my... Lower, lower ones. Younger ones. Younger ones. Uh, older ones also. Sisters. For my Only for younger ones, your brother. The older one too. Uh, older one too. Ah. Brother to the sisters, I'm older and younger too. I am Nepalese. <laughs> uh, what's your name? I'm Karun Shreshta. Huh? Karun Shreshta. Karun? Shreshta. Shreshta. This is all known. <laughs> we are all children of our parents. Yes. Brothers to so many other brethren and the sisters. But a good try. Give him a hand. <laughs> good try. Sit down. Yeah. So, you have asked these questions, right?
the next one. What are you? What are you? I'm asking you the question. Now you ask yourself in English. What am I? Have you asked these questions? Simple questions. Who am I? What am I? Now let me try. Help me. Sapai ke ho? I'm asking you. Ma ke hu? Come on, write it down. Ask yourself. Write it down, write it down. All of you, write it down. Ma ke hu? Who am I? What am I? What is this guy telling here this afternoon? Two simple questions and then answers are not really coming up that much. How many of you have asked this question to yourself? Put your hand up. You've not asked. It's time you asked. It's the right time you ask now. And then I will go to the third question. Everybody is clear? Have you written it down? Have you? Energy. Energy. Voice. Come on. Tell me. Tell me. Please answer me. Request you to tell me. Have you asked your qu this question? Now at least. Only one or two, huh? The others? Huh? Oh. Why are you here on this planet Earth? Why are you here on this planet Earth? Huh? For survival? Well, First of all, why did you come here into this planet Earth? After you come here, only you're thinking about survival. Why did you come here into this planet Earth? Huh? Uh, could we have a mic so that it can be taken across and whatever he or she says could also be heard by others? Is there a mic? I saw four or five of them over there in the morning. So how's it going till now? Fine, good, okay. What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here on this planet? And what is the purpose of your life? What are you going to do in your life? So shall we try in Nepalese? Sapai yo darthe ma kina sununcha. Mero jivan ko udeshya ke ho tho. Come on, ask yourself loud and clear. Why I'm asking you loudly is it has to go deep into your mind. Yes, I have one of the teachers here saying something interesting. Please share it with me, sir. Can I call you, sir? Or what's your name? Huh? Naveen. Can I call you Naveen? Okay. So something interesting I thought. Share it with me. Share it with us. Let's all have fun. Yes? Is it making some sense? Or you don't think it's not making sense? Huh? Why am I here on this planet Earth? Because it's your life. Okay, that's got a deeper meaning if you go deeper. If you look at it to the surface, ah, it doesn't make sense. But go deeper, lot of sense, right? Okay, maybe a little too early for the youngsters here, but you write down these questions. Sometime in life after you're 16 or 18, you better ask these questions. You know what's the biggest irony of life? A lot of old people after 60, 65, after they have done everything in life and they have retired, one foot Already in the grave, you don't know when you're going to die, then they will ask, oh, Bhagawan, God, what is the purpose of my life? Why am I born in this world? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? It's too late. It's too late. You must ask when you are in your teens, so that 
you have clarity of your life and you can do great things in your life and you can enjoy your life. You're all very lucky. You're going to ask this question when you're very young. Okay, have you written this down, all of you? Please, for your own good. Are you happy with what you're doing? Ah, now I'm going to ask you some questions which you must answer very frankly because your parents and teachers are here. How many of you like to go to school? Put your hand up. How many of you like to go to school? Oh, just some of them. Others, you don't like to go to school. Join me. I never like to go to school. Now tell me why you don't like to go to school. Why you don't like to go to school? Huh? Yes, yes. Why you like to go to school? Why you don't like to go to school? Anybody? Anybody does not like to go to school? Everybody likes to go to school? Yeah. What you don't like in school? Homework? Huh? Classwork? Tell me what all you don't like in school. Book? Which book? All books. Why? Who said book? What all books you don't like? All books you don't like? Very good. He does not like books. What books? All books. Why, my friend? What's your name? Huh? Dorji. Tell me why you don't like books. Because I mostly read my books if I don't feel up to it. I open it when I feel up to it. Look at that. How frank answer. <laughs> if I don't fall asleep, I open the book, then I'll fall asleep. <laughs> book is a sedative. It makes him sleep, which means what? It is not interesting to me. I like this chap. Teachers and parents, please note, there are many of us who don't like books because somebody said the syllabus, somebody wrote something, and I don't like that. Why are you asking me to read it? <coughs> what do you like to do? I like playing. You like playing. What do you like to play? Football, and then? Football. Basketball, volleyball. volleyball. I like watching TV. You like watching TV. How long you want to watch TV? 24 hours? If I get chance. Chance? Yeah. You'll watch for how long? I mean, till I die. Till you die, you want to watch TV? <laughs> Your eyes will go, man. OK, then you want to? Sleep. How long you want to sleep? Twelve hours? <laughs> okay. Fine. How old are you now? I'm 18. 18. It's a very, very interesting person. I like him. There are so many people in this world who don't like syllabus and books. They are wired differently. He likes to go out and play. He wants to play football, volleyball. Let's check out how good he is in that. Maybe Nepal has a talent in one of these sports in future. We don't know. In my own country, Sachin Tendulkar failed 10th standard by 6 marks. I'm not trying to advocate that don't study or fail in exams. But I'm just telling you, few of them may be good in something else. So he does not read books. If I give you a book on football, volleyball, I'll surely read it. I'll surely read it. Look at that. Very, very valid point. You get what? A strawberry. I am going to give you one more. <laughs> Come. <laughs> very frank, very daring. I'll not give him a Kit Kat. I'll give you a Cadbury's Dairy Milk. Okay. Very good. <laughs> so what subjects you don't like in your school? Ah, lovely. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? When I class for you, mathematics you don't like? There for you. How many more people want to say maths I don't like? Join me. 
Both the hands in the air. Lovely. Why you don't like mathematics? Boring. That algebra. Huh? Maths. Which one? Algebra. His allergebra. <laughs> What is this? When you want me to do these calculations, all that. Now, I don't know if some of you have been going through calculus, trigonometry, eh? that Pythagoras theorem. You have all that? Yeah. And then you have, uh, you have integration? Huh? Integration? It's devil. Oh, integration is devil. Hmm. Correlation? At this day, level in school, maybe you don't have correlation, integration. You had? Supposing I'm a maths teacher who comes to the class in the afternoon and says, today afternoon I'm going to teach you a very, very difficult topic. Very, very difficult problem. What happens in your mind? When I used to sit that side, when my, my teacher used to say that, I used to feel, if it is so difficult for the teacher, how difficult it will be for me. <laughs> so teachers, please don't make it sound very difficult for the students. The moment you say it's a difficult, it's a very hard subject, it's a tough subject. Oh, teacher, it's a little bit tough. How tough it's for me? They get demotivated. Tell them it's very easy, it's lovely, it's beautiful. See how easily you can do it. So in the afternoon, if I teach, integration to students who don't like mathematics, the brain will disintegrate into pieces. Right? Devil. If I teach correlation, they will lose all relationship in their life. Because they don't like maths. The brain is wired differently. So this we need to understand. Some people like certain things, some people don't like certain things. By nature. It's my nature, not because somebody told you, hey, don't do that, man. Right? Are you happy with what you're doing? You should enjoy what you're doing. You should enjoy your subjects. When there are exams, you will feel, yes? Somebody is smiling. There should be something. Yes, tell me. What's your name? Yeah. Huh? Sharma. What's Sharma? Sharpa. Sharpa, yes. You were laughing. You were smiling for something. Something interesting should be there. Tell us, tell us. Nothing special. Nothing? Special. Mm -hmm. Something made you laugh. Share it with us. Be brave. I'm your friend. I won't mistake you. Nobody will mistake you. We were just talking. Huh? We were talking. You were talking something. Okay, yeah. what were you talking? Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There are more laughter going on. That means a lot were talking. Okay. Yes. You can't stay lost a ribbon, but it was right there, and I was laughing. Oh, okay, okay, fine. That was a thing which happened. Lost a ribbon, ribbon was there. Fine. Okay, all right. Okay. We'll skip. Okay. So, if you're not happy with what you're doing, then you must ask the question, what is this? Why I'm not happy? Because I don't like it by nature, or I was not introduced to it properly. Okay? This also goes for older people who do their jobs. End of the day, they're not happy. End of the day, they feel stressed out. Have you ever felt you have better options? In school, you don't have no options. Syllabus is set, you have to study. But for the older people, are you happy with what you're doing every day? At the end of the day, have you ever felt, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied? For the older people here. I have a better option. Maybe I should do something else. Not what I'm doing, day in and day out. Have you ever felt that? Given an option, what would you like to do other than what you're doing right now? If you're given an option. All right, don't do what you're doing now. You could do something else what you like to do. Right? You would like to do something else? Sure, okay. Given an opportunity,
Now, this is for older people. A situation where your bills and all your responsibilities are taken care of. Your bills are paid. Everything is taken care. What do you want to do? That's when the reality comes in. I don't like doing what I'm doing. I'd like to do something else. Or, I love what I'm doing. I'll continue to do that. Now, that is another exercise that the 18 plus should start doing. What is it that I like and love to do, supposing all my bills are taken care of? Where you don't have that kind of a stress and pressure. I need to pay bills, I need to take care of my family. What would you love to do? Now, do you know who you really are? If you know, now tell us who you are. Do you know what you are? Now tell us what you are. What is your qualification? Now, this is again going to be addressed to the older people. I'm coming to a very, very important issue which has not been addressed seriously in this world. Because when I ask this question, what are going to be the answers? You will say, I'm in school, but then I'm asking the older people, what is your qualification? Can I ask the grown-ups here, what is your qualification? And I want to know what your answer is. What is your qualification? Yes, please. The older people, please participate. I need the answers. What is your qualification? Okay, Adesh, somebody sitting next to you, he's going to answer, yes? What is your qualification? Yes? Experience is your qualification. I'm going to congratulate him. <laughs> Wonderful, he's going to get a chocolate. He's come close to it, so I'm going to give him a Cadbury's. I want to ask you others, wh what's your qualification? Come on. He gave a different answer, so I am giving him a chocolate. What is your qualification? Please tell me, the ones who are grown up. It's all right, come on. We are just having fun. Quick, because we are losing time. Now you would understand, I go deeper and deeper and deeper into it. I need three days to really bring in that kind of true understanding of self. Yes. If the responses are quick, it'll be better. Uh, what I have gained so far is my qualification. What you've gained so far? Yeah. What have you gained? I don't know. Passionate. You're passionate. Wonderful. About what? About what? Wonderful, wonderful answer. I need to give him a Cadbury's. Can you please help me? One Cadbury's for him so that we can save time. What, whatever I do. Okay, you can, I, I you can buy, mention yeah. one or two things what you're passionate about. Yeah. Uh, your to name? My, to my job. What's your job? Yes, my job is teaching. Okay, what do you teach? I, and I'm passionate to my students. Oh, wonderful, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Passionate, passionate towards my students, to teaching, superb. Yeah. I said superb. Yeah. So, yeah. has anybody gone across to get a Cadbury's for him so that we can save time? Very good, excellent, experience, passion, lovely answers. Anybody else? Generally, the kind of answers we get when you ask them, what's your qualification, is people would give me qualifications from academics. I don't want to know which school, college, university qualification you've got, but I want to know more, deeper. Generally, people would only tell their educational qualifications. What's your qualification by birth? By birth, it's his passion to teach. After birth, it's his experience to teach. By birth, what comes in is the most important thing. What is your qualification by birth? How many of you have found out what is your qualification by birth? Whatever you are good at doing, whatever you love doing, that is your qualification. How do you define qualification? This is for the older people also. This is the 
true qualification in the world. This is the true explanation of qualification. It's not, I am a BA, I am an MA, I am an MBBS, I am an MS, I am a PhD, I am this and that. Paper qualification. When we ask a question, so the ones who have got the distinction, paper tiger, look at the marks, all oh, like a tiger roaring. And I start asking questions and I hear a sound from the tiger, which is meow, 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 meow. Huh? Hey, what happened to the tiger? Paper tiger, not a real tiger. Got it? A real tiger roars, a real tiger does certain things. Paper tigers don't do it practically. This is the best ever definition you can think about qualification. Even youngsters write it, if you don't understand now, as you grow up, you'll understand. Your continuous and effective performance. Continuous and effective performance. You may be efficient, but it must be effective. Performance in any chosen field of activity to always achieve results of excellence. You are continuous. That means on a regular basis, you are effective in your performance in any chosen field of activity to always achieve results of excellence. That boy would read books on football and volleyball. And if he starts playing with passion, he will really be effective on the field. And I'm, I hope he will attain excellence in any field, then that's your qualification. I'm qualified because I have performed. By performance, practically, I have quantified, so I qualify. This is the true meaning of qualification. Even after you get your paper qualification, if I give you a job and you don't do it properly, there's no use, right? I am a certified programmer, and somebody gives you a computer and says, work on it. Hey, I don't know this program. I only know that program. Huh? So when you say, I know something, you should do it and show it. Right? Isn't it? Right or wrong? Let's go to the next. This is for everybody to understand. I think 18 and above, you'll all understand. Every human being, whether rich or poor, whether you belong to a literate or an illiterate family, whether you're successful or unsuccessful, whether they, you live in a developed country, a developing country, or an underdeveloped country in this world, wherever you may be, whoever you may be, right? Wherever you live in this world, whatever be the status, could be rich, poor, whatever it is, oops, there's a feedback. You all will experience certain things in life. For the person in green shirt, the experienced man here. Personally or with near and dear, you will experience a health problem. How many of you have had a health problem? Or how many of you have had your parents or somebody in the house having a health problem? Somebody has had a health problem and you've got to solve it. And you have had a financial problem. Once you clear your health problem, you get a financial problem. Once you clear your financial problem, you will get a relationship problem. Somebody is fighting with somebody. Somebody does not like somebody. Now, if that is over, you get a social problem. I'm not getting water, there's no power, or there's some kind of an issue, there's a road blockage, something or the other. So these four issues have not spared anybody in life. You will also have problems. Why you didn't do your homework? Yesterday, no power, no current in the house. No power in the house, right? Or water did not come. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do this. So problems are there for everybody. For grown-ups, all the four are there. Some people say, why me? I got problems coming one after the other, one after the other. And there are some people say, oh, I am the chosen one. I have all together. I am facing all the problems together. So everybody in this world has these problems. As you grow up, you will face these problems. You should know how to face these problems and solve the issues. That will happen when you know yourself. Who am I? What am I? What's the purpose of my life? Then you will enjoy your life solving these problems. Right?
what I said is just coming up. For some, they come one after the other, and for a chosen few, they come all together. So rather than ask the question, why me? What shall we say? If you get all these problems, what will you do? It's only the magnitude and intensity of these problems which differ from person to person. Somebody may have a smaller problem, somebody may have a larger problem, a bigger problem. What will you say if you have these problems? Why me? Hey, Bhagwan, mujhko ye sab kar raha hai tu. Then somebody goes to the temple and says, Bhagwan, don't give me this problem, yaar. Isn't it? What shall we say? I'm, ask, I'm looking for that two words answer. Somebody gives me that answer, I will give you two chocolates. The older people here, why me? You must have experienced these. We have a health problem, or somebody has a health problem in the house. Solve it, you have a finance problem. Solve it, you have a relationship problem. Solve it, you have a social problem. They come one after the other. Sometimes they come all together. <laughs> then you say, Hare Bhagwan, mujhe kyo? <laughs> Why me? So what do we say? If you get over and then to do better. Try me! Ha! I'm here, you try me. I will take up the challenge. You should say, try me. Come on, youngsters here. When you face problems tomorrow in your life, what will you say? What is this? Try me. Try me. How many of you are going to run away? Why me? Come on. Say it loudly. Try me. That's the way to approach life. Try me. Ha. It's a problem? Oh, it's like the hill. I'm going to conquer the hill. I'm going to turn it to dust. That should be your approach. That's when you're strong. You have no choice but to face it. There are many who buckle down and are unable to come to terms with these problems. Once you know yourself and are prepared to face, these, face them, you will say, try me, and you'll get over it. OK? So what is all that? You become your own master. Once you have known yourself, once you have known who you are, what you are, why you are here on planet Earth, you will know your problems and you will master it. You will know how to get over it. Then you become your own master. How many of you want to become your own master? You want to be your own master? Put your hand up. And all of you say, I want to be my own master. Wonderful. If you become your own master, then you decide what to do in your life. You will take decisions where you will not blame others, and you will be responsible for your actions, and you will be a brave person in this world. This morning, the concern was about why youngsters are not becoming entrepreneurs, starting business on their own. There are a lot of changes that need to happen. And if you are determined and you have a strong mind and know what your strength is, all of you can become business people or entrepreneurs. You could start your own business and you'll be the master of the business. Right? <laughs> Wonderful. I'll touch upon just a few things and we'll go to handwriting. This is for the older people. The kind of research we have done across the globe with Gallup 70% of the people around the world are not satisfied with their jobs. 70%. Because they've picked up wrong things. They get burnt out very soon. In my city called Bengaluru, it's the IT capital of the world. At least Southeast Asia. So many youngsters go and get into IT. Three, four years down the line. Oh, I've been there, done that now. Nothing else in life here. It's boring. They get burnt out. How do most people choose their occupation, profession, vocation, or careers? Do you study like morning they were discussing now? MBBS doctor means respectable. Engineer, respectable. Auditor, respectable. Lawyer, respectable. All other professions, not respectable. No. 
There should be something called as dignity of labor. You want to do carpentry, be the best carpenter. You want to do plumbing, you be the best, best plumber. You're sweeping someplace, you be the best sweeper. So you excel in what you do. You love doing it. How do you choose it? Now, let me give you an experience from your own school life or college life. What are the subjects you like reading? Tell me, each one of you, just put your hand up randomly and tell me, I like reading this subject. <laughs> Very good. Maths. When you're reading a subject, you started at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You don't know how the time is going away. It's 6 in the evening.